Good morning, everybody. Uh, I think we'll get started for this uh, morning session in Sparkle Speech Recognition. Uh, so we'll get right into it. Our first paper is on multi microphone adaptive noise cancellation for robust hot word detection. The authors are uh, Yi Tang Huang, Taraj Shabestri, Alex Grunstein, and Lee Wan. And uh, the authors are written by a colleague, uh, Kwan Wang. Today I'm going to present multi-microphone adaptive noise cancellation for robust photo detection. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize since the first author of this work, Arden, did not make his trip here. He registered for the interspeech, booked the flights and hotels, and was very well prepared for this presentation. Unfortunately, he broke his, neck, uh, he broke his knee a few days before the trip, and the injury was very serious. My name is Chen Wang. I'm from the Google Speech team, and I work with Arden very closely. However, I'm not as familiar with this work as himself, so if I miss anything important or do not understand your questions, I apologize. But you could always uh, directly send an email to Arden if you have any questions. Okay, let's start. So, most of you may already know what Fortword is. Google call it Fortword, Amazon call it um, Wakeboard, others call it Keyword. It's the same thing. At Google, the Fortword is OK Google or Hey Google. Photo detection is the doorkeeper of voice assistant services. It runs on Google Home devices and Android phones. A false reject means you said the hot word, hey Google, but the device did not respond. This is a very frustrating user experience, but this can happen a lot when the background is noisy, for example, when you are watching TV. So this research addresses the problem of the high false reject rate in photo detection when there is strong TV noise which is illustrated in this picture. TV noise is the most difficult case because TV noise also contains real human speech. Okay. Why do we now believe that this issue is becoming more and more important? According to a voice board study, by the end of 2018, over 1 billion devices, including smartphones, smart speakers, and even cars, have access to voice assistant services. We have come to the second phrase of such services where voice assistants are ubiquitous and the environments are super noisy. There are many existing approaches for the noise robustness problem. There are two big categories. The first is multi-condition or multi-style training, and the second is beam forming. Multi-style training is generally effective for ambient noise, but doesn't work very well with multi-talker noise, like TV. On the other hand, beam formers are well known to yield no gain with small arrays, for example, the first generation Google Home only has two microphones. Beamformers also need to estimate source location and are very sensitive to microphone mismatch. So we need new ideas. In this year's ICAST, we proposed a new approach called Quadrat Cleaner. It is a two-channel statistical speech enhancement algorithm. It is based on two assumptions of Quadrat. First, a Quadrat is the leading phrase of a valid voice query, and second, Hot words are very short, typically less than one second. So, hot word cleaner, how does it work? Uh, we divide the signal processing into three layers. The bottom layer, we process the two microphone signals, like a standard adaptive noise cancellation system, without loss of generality. We assume microphone one is the mixture signal, and the microphone two is the reference signal. In other words, we use microphone two signal to predict the microphone one signal. Uh, since this is very important, I'm going to repeat it. We use several frames from microphone two, which is um, X2 here, to predict microphone one, which is X1 here. And this is the linear prediction. Because the two microphones are very close, the two signals should be highly correlated. And the prediction error, which is the E of N here, should be very small. But we cannot directly use E of N, otherwise we will cancel both noise and the hot word. In the middle layer, we maintain a first in, first out buffer, and we push the adaptive noise cancellation filter coefficients into this buffer. And in the top layer, we take filter coefficients out from the buffer to process the two microphone signals, and take the output 
uh, the preliminary result. But it is very important to note that we add a constant delay to the buffer. Before the fault word is being spoken, there is only background noise. There's no fault word. And uh, if we estimate the, co the filter coefficients, it is only for the noise. But because there is a delay, so these filter coefficients are actually being applied to the fault word. That's how the magic happens. So that's for the two-channel fault word cleaner. It works very well. And the question that naturally follows is, can we get even better results if we have even more microphones, for example, three? So here is the common signal model used in multi-microphone speech enhancement. Assume there is a single speech source in the far field, ST. This is a, a single speech source. There are also two different noise sources, U sub Q of T. Like this U are noise sources. There are M different microphones, from microphone one to microphone big M. And the microphone signals are Y sub M of T. For each microphone, we decompose it to speech noise and uh, the noise sources. Here, A and B are the room impulse responses for the speech and the noises. They are applied to the speech and the noise sources using convolutional operations. Alternatively, for each microphone, Y sub M of T, um, we can also write it as a transform from the first microphone, X1 of T. So this X1 of T is the first microphone. And just using different impulse responses, H and G, instead of A and B here. So if you write Y as a, uh, if you write Y uh, respect to S and U, you get A and B. But you can always transfer YM to X1, such that you use the new parameter, H and G. And uh, our purpose is to estimate X1 of T instead of S of T. If we write down the model in the short-term Fourier, transfer, Fourier transform domain, there are two different simplified versions of the model. The multiplicative, the multiplicative transfer function, or MTF model, which is on the left, and the convolutive transfer function, or CTF model, which is on the right. MTF is usually used by informers, but it requires a large FFT size to be accurate, so we can't use it. Our photovoltaic cleaner have to use CTF, because we have very strict requirements for latency, meaning the FFT size must be very small. So here are the equations in the time frequency domain. Here, um, this K is the frequency, and this N is the time, it's a frame, it's a time. Y of one is the true signal of the first microphone, but it's the uh, STFT, not the uh, waveform. Um, Y1 hat, this is the estimated signal of the first microphone. And uh, this estimation is using all the other microphones from microphone two to M. So this uppercase Y, this is the short-term Fourier transform, and this lowercase Y is the waveform signal. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's also the uh, SDFT. And uh, this is, this is, sub, uh, this is, uh, had a subscript two to M, means this is stacked uh, signals from uh, the second microphone to the last microphone. So the Z is the error. We want to estimate the filter coefficients W. W is what, what we want to compute. So we do this by minimizing the error Z. We simply minimize the mean square error using the first, the first this, is, uh, this is short for recursive least square algorithm. But we also need to know that um, this minimization must be done when there is no speech. So uh, S, ST equals to zero. That means Y equals to VT. This VT is just removing the, removing the speech part from the Y. So it means VT is the microphone signal when there is only noise, when there is no hot word. OK, Google. OK. So here is the summary of the multi-microphone hot word cleaner algorithm. First, we recursively update intermediate variables, big R and small r. Second, we compute the filter coefficients W using the recursive least square method. And finally, we compute the cleaner output Z using the deferred filter coefficients. And Z, this Z is our final output. Here, we need to highlight that the delay of D frames is very, very important to our success here. The delay D helps us to use coefficients estimated on pure noise 
to clean the OK Google of Hey Google Park. In our experiments, this D is said to be 768 milliseconds. Here are two things we want to briefly discuss. First, what is unique about the portable cleaner? We realize that portable sits in the transition period between two acoustic themes. We start with pure noise, and then we have both portable plus noise. So if we use an analogy to image processing, the cleaner is like an edge filter for speech. Second, what are the benefits of using more microphones? Here is our intuitive explanation. When there is only one point noise source, its recording at two different microphones cannot be perfectly coherent. By adding more microphones, more reference signals are available in the signal prediction problem, and the residual error can be further minimized. When there are multiple point noise sources, according to the MINT multi-channel inverse theory, a perfect noise cancellation is only achievable when M minus one is greater than or equal to Q. Here, M is the number of microphones and the Q is the number of noise sources. We have introduced the multi-microphone cleaner algorithm. Now let's see how do we integrate it with the hardware detection system. So here, A is the baseline with, without the cleaner. Hardware detection is run on each microphone signal, and a logical OR gate is used to combine the three independent decisions. This means that as long as any one of these microphone signals trigger a hardware, we are, we are going to fire the hardware. B is the cleaner only strategy. The cleaner produces a single channel clean signal, which is fed to a single hardware detector. C is the so-called hybrid strategy. It offers two benefits. First, it has a lower latency because it only runs two hardware detectors. And second, we guarantee there is no performance degradation in quiet environments because the first microphone has its own individual hardware detector. Note that the hardware detectors are all the same in this study. It's an end-to-end -end model we trained at Google. In our experiments, this is the device we use for data collection. It has three microphones and they form a triangle shape within a circle of diameter 66 millimeters. The recordings took place in a living room. A mouse simulator was used to play clean utterances, and a TV was placed 2.7 meters from the mouse simulator. The signal to noise ratios of the re recorded utterances are between 0 and 10 decibels. And this table here it summarizes the data we, we are going to use for our simulations. Uh, here is the sample utterance. On the left are the three microphone signals in red. On the right, we show the waveforms of the two microphone and three microphone cleaner outputs. Just by eyeball, the residual in this three microphone cleaner has much smaller magnitude than when we use the two microphone uh, uh, cleaner. So let's listen to the samples. Uh, first, let's listen to the original signal of the three microphones. Like, what do they sound like when they are being mixed? Do you, do you all uh, hear here? Like uh, the user said, OK Google here. And all these parts are OK Google. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, the noise. So this is quite difficult. Let, let me replay from here. For our strong willed and forward thinking new commissioner. Wait, 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 wait. That's really suspicious. So here is the K Google. Did you hear that? Do I have any? Therefore, I will be surrendering myself to our strong willed and forward thinking new commissioner. Wait, 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 wait. That's really suspicious. Hey, Do I have any? So remember this, your, uh, this position. And next, I'm going to play the mm, two. Two microphone uh, cleaner output, which is this one. So from here, you can very clearly hear the hear the paper part and even the curate after it. 
and then like okay, you're getting to this part. Okay, then let's listen to the uh, three microphone cleaner output, which is which is even better. All right. So all this part has been like a very well cancelled by the cleaner. Here is the uh, force accept, force reject ROC curve for a far field clean evaluation set. Uh, I call it a clean evaluation because this clean means uh, we have turned the TV off. We test five different systems. The baseline is three microphones. Uh, the two microphone cleaner, three microphone cleaner, both with the uh, clean only and the hybrid uh, integrations. Basically, the performance of the five systems are very similar on this clean evaluation. No one is significantly better than others. But um, here is the evaluation if we turn on the TV. So here is we turn off the TV. Here is we turn on the TV. Apparently, the baseline is very bad here. Any of the other system with the cleaner has much better performance. The first reject rate at the operating point reduced from about 75% to 17%. Besides, three microphone cleaner is also significantly better than two microphone, two microphone cleaner. This is about 33.5 relative reduction in first reject rate from two microphone to three microphone cleaner. Okay, so uh, conclusion of this work, um, we have generalized the idea of portable cleaner from two microphone to both microphone systems. We provided a new perspective to better understand the cleaner idea. Portable cleaner can be seen as an acoustic steam edge filter. We explained why we want to use more microphones. It allows for better noise cancellation. And uh, using new recorded data, we compare two microphone versus three microphone cleaners. We show that by adding one more microphone, the force reject rate can be further reduced relatively by 33.5%. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? We have two minutes for questions. I know our speaker said he can't answer those questions himself, but you can ask them anyway and let's see how it goes. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to ask, how sensitive is system to the duration of the, of the hot war? And can it use also for the phrase afterwards? Because after some time, it will somehow again start to suppress, I assume, also the, 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 the hot war uh, uh, on here. Yes, that's very right. Uh, that's very correct. The hot war is really a very fixed length, about uh, 800 uh, milliseconds. And, uh, and uh, we don't care about the suppression after the hot word because this uh, cleaner work is really about have a better detection of the hot word. Uh, we have another work called um, uh, speech cleaner, which is using a different algorithm to change the parameters after we have detected the hot word. Uh, that paper is not published yet, but maybe next year in, in Shanghai, you are going to see it. Is it critical which microphone you choose as the microphone number one? Or um, I don't think uh, I don't think it, it really matters. Like because like uh, the correlations are kind of like symmetric. Like uh, uh, unless your specific, one specific microphone is broken and the, all, all the others are working, otherwise it doesn't make much difference. All right. That's uh, the last question. Yeah. Fine. Then my question is similar to the first question. Mm -hmm. is if the part of the background noise was the speaker, if he was talking before he said, okay, cool, so would it be suppressed? Um, actually, I don't know. Uh, you may want to send an email to the author of this paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's thank our speaker and get going. Uh,